Today I want to give you guys three really easy and practical tips that you can start implementing into your throwies right now in order to increase the quality. Because recently a lot of you guys have been hitting me up over on Instagram asking me, hey John, something looks weird about my throwie and I kind of can't put my finger on it. What are some tips I can go ahead and use? So the very first tip is going to be use easily repeatable shapes. A lot of amateur graffiti artists and even intermediate graffiti artists make this mistake of using overcomplicated shapes. And what ends up happening is when you go to rock your throwie in the books or on a wall, you find yourself making these really simple mistakes that you wouldn't have made had you had easily repeatable shapes. I'm sure we've all been in that situation where you go to rock your throwy in the books or on a wall, doesn't matter where, you do it, you feel confident, you take a step back and you're looking at it like, oh my god, oh my god, that's toy, that sucks, I wish I didn't do it. We've all had that happen to us. And while yes, there are other fundamental issues at play that's kind of causing that, one of the biggest things is the lack of consistency. Now obviously the more advanced you become, the easier it is in order to use these more technical shapes and still have that level of consistency, but for intermediate and amateur graffiti artists, think about your favorite graffiti artists out there with the best throwies you could imagine. What do they all have in common? They have a certain level of consistency, and having these easily repeatable shapes is going to increase your consistency with your throwing. So that's really what we're looking for. It also just makes your throwing much more practical, and this leads us right to the next tip, and that's do not sketch your throwing. If you're sitting there practicing your throwing in your books, you do not want to sketch it with a pencil, and you certainly don't want to be erasing. Let me explain why. Your throwing is like a signature, and what I mean by that is I mean that there's a certain level of muscle memory associated with your throwing. There's a certain level of kind of hand-eye coordination that goes along with it. You learn how to do your throwy the same way you would learn how to do your signature. And if you're sitting there sketching your throwy, then there's a couple of things that are happening here that's preventing you from actually progressing. First and foremost, you're not practicing that muscle memory. Therefore, when you go to rock it in a book or you go to rock it on a wall with a more permanent substance, you're going to find yourself very hesitatedly going around your throwy, and it's not going to work out. You're going to lose that consistency as well. And that's all because you don't have that muscle memory. You're not going to have those smooth, confident lines. And here's the next part of it. You have to allow yourself to make mistakes. That's why we want to use pens, markers, and more permanent substances when we're practicing the books, because we have to contend with our mistakes. We can't get rid of them. We got to look at it. We have to address it. We have to figure out what went wrong, and then we have to do it again and fix it. Then after we do that, we got to practice the new muscle memory for the correct version. That way, when we go to the wall, we understand on a deep, intimate level how our throwy functions and what not to do. Because we don't get a second chance, right? Once it comes time in order to put down the actual outline of the throwy if you're actually filling it in, or once it comes time in order to just rock your hollow, you gotta have those confident lines. You have to have that muscle memory down pat. And if you've been sitting there the past six months with a pencil and an eraser in your hand, sketching your throwy, then you're not getting that muscle memory down pat, you're not getting that confident line work, you're not understanding your throwy on a deeper level. But on top of that, the worst thing of all is you've more than likely pampered your throwy. This is by far the worst thing. A lot of amateur and intermediate graffiti artists over pamper their throwies. This makes it so their throwy isn't practical for a wall. They added a little bit too much here, a little bit too much there, and they've just treated it kind of like a piece. Just a lot softer and rounder than your typical piece. They go into it with the wrong mindset. They forget that the throwy is meant to be thrown up onto the wall, as opposed to you sitting there and trying to design something pretty for the wall. Now that's not to say that your throwy shouldn't look nice, it certainly can. But remember, this form of graffiti is for utility. You don't have all day to sit there and start rocking your throwy, you need to have a very practical throwy. And this leads us to the last tip right here, which is going to be check out the size of your throwy. I notice a lot of amateurs, especially amateurs, they either do it way too large or way too small in proportion to the actual lettering itself. So if you notice, that, you know, when you're sketching in your books, your throwy takes up the entire page and, you know, it's not really proportioned to itself, then shrink it down a little bit. You know, scale that thing down and work the letters a little bit smaller. This is going to help you to proportion the actual size of the letters to how big the letter actually is. That way you don't end up with a super lanky, scrawny looking letter that kind of looks out of place. Or on the opposite side of the spectrum, some people do it way too small and they run into the opposite issue where they have these really pudgy letters that don't have enough room for their letter structures because every thing is being squished together. So you kind of want to balloon that out a little bit, make it a little bit larger in order to give your letters some room to breathe. When you actually hop onto a wall with your throwy, you're going to find that it kind of proportions itself to be the case where the tops of your throwies are going to be as high as your arm can reach, which goes off the camera a little bit, but hopefully, you know, you can kind of simulate this at home. The center of your letters, the mean line, is going to be about where your collarbone is, and then the baseline, the bottoms of your letters, is going to be your arm in a relaxed position. And the width of each individual letter is going to roughly be 
be about from one arm's length to collarbone or from one arm's length to shoulder or from one arm's length if you like to run your letters a little bit bigger to your elbow. This is largely personal preference and it really does depend on personal preference as far as which one you'd like to go to but feel free to kind of figure out what works best for you and stick with that. You'll find that those proportions tend to work a lot better for most throwies. But dudes that pretty much wraps up three quick and easy tips for your throwies. I know a lot of you guys are really experienced graffiti artists as well so drop down some more tips in the comments down below. And for anybody who's newer and still lost as far as throwies is concerned drop any questions you might have down below. Let's start with a little bit of a conversation. If you want to continue learning more about graffiti check out the best how to do graffiti tutorials anywhere online right up here with more graffiti content right down here and speed up your learning process by picking up one of the books I published in the description down below. On that note, I'll catch you guys back here next week. Thanks for watching.